For my biology role model project, I chose to do Dr. Kristen Marhaver. Dr. Kristen Marhaver is a coral reef scientist, a coral reproduction expert, and a voice for smarter ocean conservation. As per her lab website, she is also a TED Senior Fellow, a WINGS Fellow, a National Geographic Explorer, a Georgia Tech Alumni 40 Under 40 honoree, and a World Economic Forum Young Scientist. As previously mentioned, Dr. Marhaver is a coral reef biologist, meaning that on a day-to-day -day basis she works as a scuba diver, underwater photographer, and as a world-renowned coral breeding expert. Her lab website states that during her time in Curacao, which is where her lab is located, she has invented new methods for coral breeding, baby coral propagation, and coral gene banking, which help scientists and reef restoration teams worldwide. Her current research focus is coral larval propagation. In fact, she was the first person in the world to raise baby pillar corals, an endangered and nearly extinct Caribbean coral species. This process was outlined in a 2015 article titled Reproductive Natural History and Successful Juvenile Propagation of the Threatened Caribbean Pillar Coral, Dengorgria cylindris. How did Dr. Marhaver become interested in science? Well, I guess you could say she was looking for a license to kill. No, but in all actuality, when Dr. Marhaver was growing up in Minnesota, one of her neighbors was really interested in James Bond, and they wanted to learn how to scuba dive. This interest, interest prompted Dr. Marhaver to bring it up with her dad, and a couple of years later, when they were living in Kansas, Dr. Marhaver and her dad started taking diving lessons shortly after her 15th birthday. Over their summers, they would then sometimes visit the Caribbean to see the coral reefs and the natural beauty there. This mo motivated Dr. Marhaver to pursue an undergraduate degree in biology later in her life. Dr. Marhaver completed a Bachelor of Science in Applied Biology at the Georgia Institute of Technology. A Georgia Tech article explains that during her time as an undergrad, she started research at the lab of Dr. Terry Snell. He first let her observe his work on coral, coral stress genomics before promoting her through the ranks as a lab assistant. She would go on to work with Dr. Jones and Hay. In the present, Dr. Marhaver annually re sponsors a first-year biology researcher at Georgia Tech through the Fast Track Research Program. She says, that's how it all began for me, and it means a ton to be able to pay it forward to, pay forward to support someone who is in my shoes 20 years later. After graduating Georgia Tech, she landed a competitive PhD position at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. In a recent scientific article, article titled Composite Substrates Reveal Inorganic Material Cues for Coral Larval Sediment," published on March 7, 2022, Dr. Marhaver and a team of other researchers attempted to figure out whether coral larvae prefer to settle in certain places based on the or inorganic materials that are present. The rates of coral larval recruitment, which basically means coral reproduction, are low, so identifying possible inorganic materials that aid in larvae development would be beneficial. Dr. Marhaver tested this by preparing various inorganic substrates with additives and seeing which was preferred by coral larvae. Basically, inorganic compounds were mixed with filtered seawater to create a putty or a mortar. Early experiments showed that lime mortar substrates were preferred by coral larvae, so continuing experiments focused on coral larvae preference of additives. The additives that were used were natural sands, synthetic glasses, and alkaline earth carbonates. These additives were then, as the word implies, added to the lime carbonate mortar. When looking at synthetic glass content specifically, though, larvae that were presented with a choice between lime mortar substrates containing three different concentrations of glass fibers displayed a settlement preference for strub substrates with lower glass fiber content. This can be seen on the figure on the screen. The two core species that were tested, A. palmetta and D. labyrinthiformis, both preferred a glass fiber content by weight percentages at 5. So the blue circle shows that A. palmetta had a higher, um, higher rate at the 5 percentage by weight category, and the D. labyrinthiformis also had a higher rate at the 5 percentage by weight category. Basically, this means that these two coral species, when given the choice between settling in a home without glass fibers and settling in a home will, with glass fibers, will choose the home that doesn't have glass fibers. Some other methods that were used in this experiment include, but are not limited to, substrate preparation and 3D laser map surfacings. I chose Dr. Marhaver as my scientist, as the scientist I wanted to research, because bef before I was interested in, in pursuing medicine, when I was younger, I was always interested in the animals and, and environments that were thriving underwater. And I will say that Finding Nemo was one of my favorite movies, but my interest went beyond a superficial level. 
I remember the first time I went diving. I totally freaked out. It seemed like the ocean would swallow me up whole. And there was so much life down below that I didn't even know existed. However, I found that the fear of the unknown is something that actually ended up motivating me to learn more about the ocean than deterring, deterring me from it. Throughout the course of my lifetime, global warming has also been an ever-present problem. With this, coral reefs have obviously faced many growing obstacles. Dr. Marhaver, in her TED Talk from 2017, talked about the possibilities that science can unlock for coral conservation. After hearing over and over about the death of coral reefs, I, was, I thought it was inspiring to hear about someone who is looking forward and trying to find solutions to modern issues through science. Dr. Marhaver has found various methods that improve coral larvae survival, such as the compos composite substrate study that was previously mentioned. In the future, however, she plans to continue her coral conservation work while also looking into other possible study areas such as antibiotic development. The biodiversity of coral is something that has not been thoroughly researched, and it is possible that corals may hold the key to some prevalent diseases.